Hi, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel, E.D. Lewis Reviews. Um, and I am back here with not a book review, but a book tag, and it's... I'm a little late to the game on this one, but, um, I just thought, you know, what the heck, let's, you know, let's do it anyway. I'm a little behind, but that's alright. So, at least I am, you know, doing the tag. So it is the Mid-Year Book Freakout Tag. I mean, you're, okay, yeah, I got to make sure that it didn't say book tag, it says book freakout. I just wasn't sure if I had to flip those around. But anyway, there are 13 questions or prompts, and I'm going to get started with that right now. So, <clears throat> here we go. Number one. Oh, and by the way, I, I'm not really sure who started this, so if I find out, it will be in the, in the description down below. But, uh, if, if I don't, it won't be there, so... Yeah, you know. All right, question number one. I have my list right down here. So, all right. Um, best book you've read so far this year? Well, that would be, and I have my stack right next to me. Stack of books. You know we're doing tag. Is Dracul, which I recently reviewed this one, so I won't really have to talk much about it. Um, it is the prequel to Dracula by Dacre Stoker and J.D. Barker. So this, you know, tells the story of Bram Stoker, who is a very ill child and has a very, um, interesting run-in with his, uh, with his nanny. So, and he and his sister investigate her, and this eventually leads, when he's an adult, where he's trapped in a tower, fending off vampires. So, it's very good, it's very creepy, there are some spooky moments, I forgot to talk about in my review that it did leave me kind of jumpy at times because while I was reading it, I heard a weird sound. And I'd look up and I'd be like, "What's that? What was that?" That never happens to me. So, but there are some creepy, cringy moments that are just gross, and it's just like, "Ugh, yeah, that's disgusting." But uh, I think that just helped with the chills. So you know, they weren't scary. Those moments weren't scary, but they were creepy. But they helped with you know with the atmosphere. So it was a great book. Highly recommend. That was the first book on the tag. Number two, best sequel you've read so far this year. Um, that would be this book right here on my Kindle. My tablet, Kindle, whatever. It's a Kindle book. And that is, oopsie, bad thing about that. I'll get it close enough. I have to put it at an angle. And that is, what the? I don't know what uh, glitch. Well, um, I'm sorry about that. Here, let me see if I can fix that really quick. What has happened? We're running to technical difficulties, but the book is called, um, Dracula the Undead. By, uh, uh, Frida Warrington, or Warrington, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name. I just want to show you the cover. There we go! Okay. I don't know what happened there, but, uh, there, there's a little better for you. Dracula the, Un Dracula the Undead by Frida Warrington. It came out in the 90s. I have yet to review this book. I will review it, but like I said, it is a sequel, a follow-up to Dracula, and I think it's a very worthy one, so do check it out. There is another book with the same title, um, but Undead is hyphenated, and it's by different authors, and I plan to talk about that one, too. That one didn't go over so well, and we will not discuss it now. But this book, um, kind of goes back to Dracula's origin, which is briefly talked about in the original novel by Bram Stoker. He references it twice in the book, and actually, it is even talked a little bit about in this book, too. So, I enjoyed it a lot. It was very good. In some ways, it's very much in the spirit of Dracula, the original novel, and it's done in the same style, just like the Dracula, um, the book Dracul, sorry, is done through journals and stuff like that. So anyway, that's my that's my answer for question number two. So number three, I don't have a cover for this one or a picture because it hasn't come out yet. But number three is new release you haven't read yet, but want to. Well, it, uh, the book that I'm answering this question with is Dead Around Midnight. It is by Joseph Hood. 
It has not come out yet. It's not coming out till next year. I think the original plan is it was supposed to come out late this year. Um, he decided to push it back a little bit and work some more on it and also have, uh, he has other things he wants to focus on. And, um, that just makes it even more of an anticipated read, actually. So it's just like, it kind of builds you more suspense. What's he going to come up with next? I have read his other two books, which is uh, My Friend Nick and The Bride of Warren, which are both fantastic horror novels. Do check those out. And kind of thriller, too. So they're thriller and horror. But this is the third one in his trilogy. It will tie both of those together. And so I can't wait to read that. That is definitely a read I will be reading next year. So... Number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I, I have a bad habit of not keeping up with the uh, new releases and upcoming releases, so I oftentimes don't know what's coming out. And that's kind of terrible for, you know, for me. I'm more interested most of the time anyway, unless something, you know, I hear about it or I see it advertised on... Um, Instagram or something and it catches my interest, I'm usually a little more interested in things that have already um, been released, you know, older books, but occasionally I'll see something, you know, from an author that I follow or I like to read, like Joseph Hood, uh, who's also a friend, and so I know, you know, what he, you know, what he's working on, and I'm like, ooh, I'm interested in reading, or I just stumble upon it by accident, or I hear it from word of mouth or something. So that's about the only way I know about new releases is those ways. But, so I don't have one. I don't have an answer for number four. So it's, I don't know. Number five, Biggest Disappointment. Okay, this was a book, I didn't review it. I talked about it in a wrap-up video. I think it was, it was January, by the way. And that was the book, or novella, Blood Right, by X. Aratari, Aratari, Aratar. I'm not sure how to pronounce. I'm pretty sure it's her name, but this is the book, Bir uh, Birthright. I always want to call it Blood Right for some reason. Even when I wrote down my notes, I called it Blood Right for some reason. Um, it's kind of erotic horror, and it's also uh, LGBT book and it was good I liked it but it was a little disappointing I liked it better than some people because some people on Goodreads get really terrible reviews and I, I thought they were being a little harsh on it but I I did enjoy it there was enjoyment out of it but it was just uh, I was a tad disappointed actually there's a character in the uh, Dracula the Undead book that actually reminds me of a character in this one so that is a uh, birthright. So that's my answer for question five. So okay, question number six. Biggest surprise. We got to go back to the tablet once again. Hold on. If I could have had these all up and immediately ready to go, I would, but I don't. Uh, my biggest surprise was actually Powers of Darkness, which is a Dracula um, alternative version. It's considered the lost version of Dracula. It is by um, Bram Stoker and um, Vladimir Osm Osmundson. I think it's Osmundson is how it's pronounced, but it's Icelandic. Um, it's the Icelandic version of Dracula. I will talk about it in a video for my Dracula reviews. So, um, but I actually, from what I had heard about it, I kind of thought, ah, I probably won't like it, but I was kind of driven to read it because of references from the book Dracul. And I watched a couple of videos talking about it a little bit, and I'm like, hmm, maybe I should check it out. So I did. And uh, I was still, get, I was still like, mm, I might not like it. And then I, I, I liked it. I actually was really surprised. So that was a big surprise for me. I enjoyed it quite a bit. So that is the uh, quite the answer for question number six: is Powers of Darkness, Mac Macrana, which is means Powers of Darkness. Um, seven new favorite author. I don't have a new favorite author. I'm sorry. I still have my favorites, you know, Anne Rice, 
Marilyn Ross. And then all the other ones I like, but aren't necessarily favorites. I might have a third favorite, but I don't know. But I don't have a new favorite. I think I have some more appreciation for some, but not a, a new favorite author. So, sorry about that. Number eight, newest fictional crush. I don't have a new fictional crush. I had the same fictional crush, and that would be Lestat uh, de Leoncourt. So, yeah. And I did read a Vampire Chronicles book earlier this year, and I have not reviewed it yet, and that was The Tale of the Body Thief. So, that was just a book to go along with that. Question number nine, newest favorite character. This one I had to think about a little bit. It's like, do I have a new favorite character? Yeah, I kind of do. I didn't pull the book out. It's on the shelf. I just didn't feel like pulling it out. And it is the character of Monty from The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by uh, Mackenzie Lee. Uh, his character... He went through a growth process. He was kind of rough. I wouldn't... I didn't agree with some of the choices and things he did. But I thought, you know, he was kind of wild enough that I just... I enjoyed his character. It was kind of funny. It's not stuff I would do, but I thought his character was amusing, and so, you know, and I liked how his character grew and progressed throughout the novel, so he became my newest favorite character. So. Uh, question number 10. Book that, uh, made you cry. Okay, this one's a difficult one. We're going back to the tablet again. This is a difficult one, uh, because... It didn't make me cry, but if I was going to cry, this one probably would have been the book, and I read it back in January, and it was also in the same video that I talked about with Blood R Birthright. See, there I go again. And this is by Casey uh, McQuiston. I think that's her name is pronounced. And it is red, white, and royal blue. Loved this book. Absolutely loved it. It was great. Um... It was uh, saucy, funny, and romantic. The parts that would have made me cry, because, oh, gosh, with the messages between the two characters back and forth, it was just some of the most romantic things I had ever read and heard. So, if, if I was going to cry, this one probably wouldn't, would have been the one that would have made me cry. So, um book that made you happy. Red, white, and royal blue. Same one, so. Because it, it, it did make me happy. It was a great alternative to 2019, 2020. It was a great alternative. And uh, it's a shame we didn't get that. Because, you know, it would have been a much happier and nicer time. And no coronavirus or any of that stuff, so. Like I said, um, that was number 11. So number 12, most beautiful book you bought or received uh, for this year. And I don't think I need my tablet anymore, so we can put it to the side. So the most beautiful book, I had to think about this one, because I wasn't really sure. I think this is probably the most beautiful book. I almost went with another one, but I was like, oh no, I got that last year for, I got that, you know, last calendar year. I got it for Christmas, so that doesn't count. Well, I picked this one. Blood Farm by Sam Cicillano. I'm only guessing how to pronounce the name. Kind of Italian. And it is Blood Farm. I hate that I'm getting so much glare. But, um, it's a Iowa Gothic and an Iowa Gothic. It is a Gothic horror, and I think it's, you know, it's not an official, like, book that's under the title of um, Paperbacks from Hell, but it falls in that category, so it's one of those Paperbacks from Hell books. It's from that time. So, I think it was from the 80s. Takes place in 70, in 1972. Yeah, 1988. So, it was from the late 80s. But I thought it was very pretty, and I love... It has the raised-up um, font. You can feel it. And it's, you know, 
shiny, and I just like that, the house and the snow and the trees. I hate snow, though, but it just looks so spooky and cool, and the hearse, great. It was great, so I haven't read it yet, but, you know, maybe next year. And number 13, this is the final one. Uh, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Now, for me, the end of the year is Halloween, and November for me is because I follow more of a Celtic like calendar. So, Halloween is kind of like New Year's to me. I know that may seem weird to some, and that's okay. Just if, you know, just ignore that. So, by the, by the end of the year, which for me is a little different, I need to read these books that are on my, t these two books that are on my TBR, and this other book, and I'll explain why it's not part of the TBR thing. Lady of Malo, it's on my TBR. I have not read it yet. It is a Dorothy Eden book. It'll be my first Dorothy Eden book, so I haven't read any of hers. It's about a woman who's masquerading to try and um, solve kind of a mystery. Um, she's pretending to be governess. And the man who she uh, is trying to find out about, he may know, so... I'm trying to find out why. Oh, he's pretending to be someone else, too. See, I don't remember why. I know I've read about this book. I've also heard that the back's a little misleading. I don't know. But, yeah. That's one. It's on my TBR. This one also is on my TBR. It is The Sign of the Ram by Margaret Ferguson. And it's at Paperback Library Gothic. And actually, there's a movie uh, based on this. It came out in, like, 1940s or something. Um, I haven't seen the movie. And I haven't read the book. But, uh, this is the other book I have to read by the, by Halloween, so. I think it has to do with a woman who comes to be a secretary or an assistant to someone. Cornwall. It has to do with astrology. Domineering employer. So I don't know what she works for. I, I'm thinking probably a secretary or something. Like I said, I haven't seen the movie, so... This is, uh... Second, the other one on my TBR. And then there's this book. This is actually the book I'm, uh, planning to buddy read with Regina, um, soon. And it is by Phyllis A. Whitney. It'll be my first Phyllis A. Whitney book that I've read. I have a couple others of hers. Um, on the bookshelf behind me. But I haven't read any yet, and this one sounds really good. And from what I've seen on Goodreads, it has great reviews. Um, it's called The Trembling Hills, by the way. And it takes place in, like, San Francisco. And it's during the earthquake, so it was, like, you know, late... Like, late 1800s, early 1900s, something like that. was the great earthquake that happened. So it's got historical events. It's a gothic romance. Um, and it's by Phyllis A. Whitney, who a lot of people really like, and her books, I've heard, this is quoting people, I've heard, her books are really solid. So, great American writer right there. So that is, um, that is my freak out tag, and I didn't freak out, I'm not freaking out. Um, like I said, I only have two more books on my TBR, and we still got, like, a hundred, hundred, a hundred and some days until Halloween, so I have time to read those three books. I mean, the ones not on my TBR, but I'm buddy reading, and I haven't gotten to do that since, like, last year, and I had a lot of fun with it, so I'm really looking forward to it. I'm looking more forward to it than my TBR, because I hate the idea of the TBR because it just feels like an assignment. Uh, Regina, actually, when she did this tag, she actually said the same thing. It was weird because I was thinking along those same lines, be like, when she, she was talking about planning out reading books and she feels like she's following a course syllabus, I'm like, yes, I'm feeling that exact same way. So, um, she's becoming a mood reader now and I'm planning on becoming actually a mood reader next year myself. So it's ironic that we're syncing up like that. But, um, yeah, I might make a couple TBRs like if I do half a weenathon, but, um, yeah, I'm not making a TBR for the year next year. No, unless it's a very loose one. Like, you know, I would, you know, book, TBR books I would like to read, but I don't have to, so.
Anyway, that is the freak out tag for me. If you want to do this tag, please go right ahead. It didn't say I have to tag anyone, so I'm not tagging anyone, except for anyone who wants to do it who hasn't done it yet. So please do, and please hit like and subscribe down below. Hit that little bell, and I will see you next time with another ED List Reviews. So stay safe, stay cool, and have a great summertime. <laughs> so, and read. Bye-bye.